With that, I'm just gonna bring Christine right in. Christine, are you ready? I'm ready. Awesome, it's good to see you. Uh, so I'm good excited to see you. For this session. We're just gonna start riffing on everything, AI and e-commerce, and, and let's let's just have a good time. If you can, just, just tell everybody a little bit about yourself, what you're up to today. Uh, and, and even we could drop your email in chat if you wanna do that as well. Happy to. So what I do is I help tech companies connect with retailers in a way that retailers will hear and understand them. Sometimes their, their offering is a little bit of a disconnect in terms of what the retailer is really looking for. So there's a whole, you know, kind of sea of misinformation or mis missed connections. So I really focus more on the tech side and the tech suppliers um, versus in our industry where you have a lot of people helping the retailers to find the right. Uh, yeah. Going all the way. Yeah. <laughs> when they get vetted, when that retailer with the assistance of someone or not says, OK, we want to hear what you have to say. I coach these people. I coach the tech companies so that when they go in there, not only does their product have to stand on their own like pixels. I mean, did, what, how did Brian do? Give him an honest assessment. <laughs> Brian, Brian and pixels is really like next level. Um, really impressive. And, and let me finish my point and then I'm going to come back to the thing that was popping off in my head about, about Brian and Pixels. Or, um, so I coach companies that really want to be able to connect with those retailers and it, it can cover a lot of ground. Um, in, in some cases, a retailer may not even want what they're, they say they're looking for. There's, there's a bit of a risk aversion in our world. Okay. I see this a lot. I talk to a lot of merchants as well. And and yeah, uh, I, I would like just to interrupt you really quickly. The uh, I need my page speed load time to be faster has to be my number one pet peeve of a request that you don't like, you actually don't need that. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> But here's the thing, you want to pivot and tell them kind of like, what you mean is, and but you don't even need to do that because if you can tr have the right solution come forward and and sort of say, you'll get there doing this, you're more than halfway there. So it's such a huge disconnect. And it, the industry is lagging behind in terms of what the best ne next best thing is. So to your point on that point. So here's the thing about Brian and Pixels, and we, and we can come back to this other topic, is it just really proves that AI is a tool of automation, period. It's almost like we'll get to the point, you know how we stopped using omni-channel and we just call it like retail? Yeah, it's just called marketing. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like whatever. So it's almost like I think we may stop using the word AI in the very near future and just start using automation. Yeah. Or, or just AI, I think, will may become an implied part of any tool or technology in a lot of ways. And, and I, I do agree, AI is a it's a feature, not a not a benefit, right? So it's like, okay, we use AI. Well, I don't care what you do. I want to know how, what you know impacts me. How does like, it do I need to know how they make the sausage? Right? Yeah. Not really. Sometimes, yes, uh, but not really. As long as you're getting from A to B. Um, and, and for now, where we are in the industry, coming out of a pandemic, coming out of a lot of tech advancements, yeah, there's a lot to be said about explaining the journey. Well, we use this to get here, and that's why it's so successful. We will be very quickly at the point where the leaders are just doing what they say they're going to do, they're doing it well, and the retailers are signing on board with you know, the, the front runners. So, but AI equals automation equals there's no going back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's. Uh, with that said, we've got. I've got some. Our, some of our prepared questions here. We can just dive into. I suppose. Um, let's talk about your kind of famous unspoken uh, metric that retailers aren't uh, aren't necessarily thinking about, but probably impacts uh, their business right away. What do you? What is this unspoken metric that you big, like to talk so much the about? The big reveal. So obviously. <laughs> retailers are putting everything through the lens of margin. That's pretty much kind of the driver, right? They wanna preserve that margin as much, much as possible. But the thing that can really um, creep up on you if you're not viewing it as much upfront as margin is the, is the, is, uh, the issue of time. 
time can actually, if not managed, be more damaging than not managing your margin. And it varies across retail sectors. So give me, give me an example. So, <laughs> Like we, so, we, uh, Brian was talking a lot about fashion. And I think when we think freshness and timing, fa the fashion industry is one of those faster moving ones. Well, there but, you uh, have it. There you have it. So he mentioned a fast fashion situation where the product hits the DC and you can't spend three days pitching photos back and forth to different people tweaking it, especially in fast fashion. It has got to go live and it's got to sell quickly. So I would guess that some of these fast fa fashion uh, re e com retailers would give something less than a day before they decide it's selling well or not selling well. And if it's not selling well, they'll mark it down. Yeah. Or, could move, be. It, or move it to a different placement on the site. So, um, and, and they will do so, they'll do that markdown because they know they have to get it out because new stuff needs to be better needs to be shown and connect more and better and get a better response. So the next round of photos, they all have to be there, but that quick, quick, quick level. Now that's fast fashion. Women's apparel, contemporary apparel is the same thing, but not as quick, but it's faster than you think. Okay. So the idea, and this, in some cases, some retailers are like, well, I'll wait till an end of season sale and then I'll do a big markdown mm -hmm. that can hurt the overall margin and there are levers you can pull throughout. And I'm not just talking about like a 20% markdown, right? So sometimes you earlier than you want have to really just, unfortunately the thing in the industry is take it out back and shoot it, just get, <laughs> get it out, get the new stuff in freshness so, is critical. So how do we, how do we decrease this risk of, you know, having inventory that we can't move versus, you know, having hot selling items that we don't have enough inventory for? How do you, how do we manage this? <laughs> so this is where AI comes in. So you're a retailer and you're going to look at your past, at your present, and then the missing component is the future. That's mm -hmm. where AI comes in better than any person, better than any Excel spreadsheet, better than any sort of um, gut feeling, which is back in the day, retail ran on that too. So using your AI, you can use the data of your sell throughs plus industry data to really tell you where to put your dollars in which categories in terms of a forecast. And that's a, that's retail is like whack-a-mole. That is a perpetual challenge. <laughs> You're always trying to do something really well with another thing really putting a lot of pressure on you, right? Oh, foot traffic is down. Oh, this. Oh, I, I bought the wrong things. I mean, it's endless. It's re literally endless. With, so with, with this, the AI will inform you when you partner with someone with a forecasting company, and there are several out there, to kind of provide you a bit of a crystal ball. And if I were a retailer and my choice was looking just back at my past and not adding on that crystal ball, that would be crazy to me if you weren't adding on that component. I think the, uh, the, the, the cliche idiom is it's like driving by looking through the rear view mirror. That's like, right. <laughs> so, cause it's, you're only looking at past data and yeah, there are so many lagging indicators that, that, uh, that don't really reflect that what could be happening and, uh, moving forward. Now you we're, we're talking about predicting inventory, any s specific tools you want to give a shout out to on, on that. I've got one, but I'd tell love me. to hear your thoughts. You tell me yours. Oh, uh, inventory planner. I just have known them for yeah. a while and they I know them well. do that. Yeah. They, they, they do that one thing. So if you don't need the full fledged inventory management system, you know, or connecting three PLs and, and the sure. ERP and all that stuff, you just need predictive, uh, a reliable understanding of is this product going to sell and is and when do I have to reorder more product and put my purchase orders in and how much cash flow do I need in order to accomplish all that? That one's just my go-to. I'll, I'll, I'll share it here in chat. I've got three. Yeah, so hit. Inventory Planner is a good Shopify one where you're very hands-on and you're in the data. You're really manipulating uh, and working with the information that the that their platform is giving you. Okay. So that's a, that's great. And I, and I really support them. Management one is a combination of hum, high touch, high tech. That is where they do 
uh, you of course have access to your data, but they are doing uh, a lot of that heavy lifting of getting in there and working the numbers and coming back to you and walking you through it. So depending on where you are technically, right? Um, and they're, they are, um, they, they've been in business 34 years, 35 years, and they started with brick and mortar and obviously most brick and mortar is moving online. So they've evolved with that. Mm -hmm. At the enterprise level, particularly in grocery, and you want to talk about freshness, they call it yeah. shrink, yeah. which is spoilage for us in apparel, is relics. It's R-E-L-X? E-X. R-E-L-E-X. So Relics is enterprise level and they started as demand forecasting. And um, one of the things maybe we can talk about um, is the evolution of retail tech. So if I take two seconds to do a history yeah, lesson. Let's, let's go. <laughs> so retail had no tech. Nobody wanted to work with retail. It was like, whatever. You worked your way up from the stores and then you're in corporate. So yeah. The idea of all of these solutions coming forward to help retailers deal with their pain points is relatively new and has evolved over the past whatever years, five years, seven years, Harvard Business School was all of a sudden like, hey, here's what your thesis is gonna be on. Or maybe, I don't know if, if business schools ran out of ideas, but all of a sudden there were a lot of solutions for retail and so, and maybe it came out of the dot-com era because you had e-commerce informing all the technical things that could be done to automate, back to automation, some of those really rote retail be, you know, re responsibilities when you're running a retail business. Okay, so, so there's consolidation, people go out of business, then there's like better footing, and now there's, as you and I both know, really good, really important, great tech partners available that should be used by retailers of all types. Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, the, the landscape of, let's say, pre-COVID, which is everyone was sort of a little bit of a niche. And now what you have happening is some of the ones that were good at one thing are expanding across those little niches and saying, well, for us to do this well, we need to make sure, like, we our piece won't succeed if the retailer isn't also using tech before and after our piece. So we're going to buy companies or we're going to develop, build, buy or build mm -hmm. the left and right side of our core competency. So now yeah. you have rising to the top some of the winners and the niches coming across more aspects. Yeah, we saw this with Octane on earlier. They started as a messenger tool. They added SMS and now they're adding this quiz functionality. When I asked their president, Ben Parr said, I love the quiz functionality, but why'd you build a, a quiz? And he says, look, we've always been about like deepening the brand connection between the customer, you know, and, and the brand and quizzes do just that. And I was like, okay, so, so you're not a channel marketing tool. You're a brand connection tool. And so you can imagine that their evolution will just continue to find other opportunities to make a stronger brand connection and they will build the technology to, to support it. So that's Agreed. what I think of. There's another one, um, actually, I think stamped.io just got acquired by, who was it? Was uh, I forgot, uh, by, oh, we, it was WeCommerce. So they're part of the WeCommerce suite of tools, but what stamped and a few others uh, have done in the past, they started as a review tool and then they launched loyalty and rewards and there's Grow Wave and there's, a couple others, why, why am I forgetting, <laughs> that aren't on the top of my, my head right now, but um, that, that have done both the reviews and the loyalty because they found that they needed to go you know, hand in hand for those two things. So I think that this is happening. If there's, there's some risks here. I do feel like as, it, as this expansion happens or the consolidation, uh, there will be you know, a niche opportunity for somebody to move faster and make a better mousetrap or something like that. But I don't know, I don't think it'll be quite the same opportunity as the first wave, which was there are no tools in this space and we're creating the first one. But yeah, what do, what do you think about that? As a retailer, I think you have to consider both. I think also there's bandwidth, you know, if they can get like great in one way and just okay in others, but have one bill to pay and one client to work with, there's, you know, they'll kind of lean on that a little bit as that other, as they evolve and grow. Um, yeah. 
I wouldn't do that because I'm, I get in the weeds. But when you have a, a time and, and ability bandwidth, you might lean towards some of that, what you're talking about. One of the, one, a new company that um, really impressed me in, in terms of the, um, what we were just talking about, these companies that were like, yeah, we want really that engagement from the client yeah. is a company called True Rating. So True. yesterday the dialogue was, oh, Krispy Kreme donuts, good or bad? Mm -hmm. I said, why don't you ask the customer? Why don't you ask mm -hmm. them how? Using either one of the companies you mentioned, a quiz, did you? What? How many Krispy Kreme, Kreme donuts do you think we've given out so far? Answer, engagement. Do you like this? Answer. Um, and, and true rating is a very, it's, it's, it's of the zeitgeist because it's one question. <laughs> While you're waiting for them to put the donut in the bag, you're able to, I'm not, Krispy Kreme does not use them. I'm suggesting that anyone who has any questions on whether something's good or not, why don't you just ask your customers? Yeah, and then get the real how source of truth. <laughs> are you one of these tech providers, I mean, it's, that's what it's there for, right? That's what it's there for. So yeah. um, riffing we are and these are all great solutions i find that you know our job you, your job my job my job we're, you know we are able to really filter the information and sort of say oh this goes here and this goes here and this goes here kind of like a tetris and the boxes stack up nicely uh i i like to take that extra step and say okay think of this in this capacity and it works well with on this in this way in this way so as you and I discussed, I like to do a roadmap. Okay, which box does this fall in? Is it a pre-purchase? Meaning you're trying to engage with the customer, you're trying to get information from the customer, you're trying to sell to the customer. That's all pre-purchase. That's, you know, and there's a lot of focus there and a lot of solutions there. Then there's actual purchase. What is checkout like? Do you have the payment options? And then of course now with e-com, post-purchase has become huge. When you're in a store brick and mortar, there's not a lot to post purchase. They hand you the bag and you walk out. That that's there's really it doesn't exist. Now it does significantly. It does in every sector and it does with it has a lot of tech support. So post purchases, how did it get delivered? What condition was it in? Uh, was it in 10 minutes? Was it in four days? Um, and then one step further is well, you bought something from a company in another state or whatever you shopped an e-com how do you return it <laughs> so all of that falls under post purchase and there's yeah. tech for that too yeah I, I and i think you know in the on the retail side walking out of the store was the end of the transaction and i think that was the short-sightedness of retailers that thought foot traffic would last. And then when COVID happened no foot traffic and they realized, oh, I don't have any information on any of my customers. Well, I really wish you. I was collecting those emails and phone numbers. <laughs> you know, you're so right. I never even thought of that because way many years ago, I used to do site selection for a retailer and it was all about the footfall it was such a major component, like the one what's your what's your what's your footfall annually how much traffic do you get and yeah. even in cities the the brokers you know the city brokers would hire counters to stand on street corners if they had a premier flagship they would be able to tell a premier brand hey we had people stand on this corner for a month or all year so you have every month and every weekend and we can tell you that this many people pass this storefront can you imagine? It's not even a thing now. I yeah, I think now, especially, I think COVID like annihilated or, or changed the trajectory of this completely. But it's it's we're going to rely on the brand and driving an experience, probably an online experience that pulls them into the retail location. So that because they know they saw them on social and they know that there's a store nearby, they'll come to you. So by placing the building, you grow the foot traffic of that location rather than, yeah, the, I stumbled into this store cause I was, you know, was walking down the street or window browsing or, or I'm at the mall, you know, going store right. to store. So 
So, I, yeah. I like to, I am, when I'm speaking with people who had brick and mortar and are struggling to kind of um, build e -com, I like to say, you need to think of your threshold, not as the thing at your front door anymore. It's have they entered your site? So your email marketing is your windows. And when they click and are on your site, now they're in your store. They're, think of them, they walked through the doors and now they're yours to sell. Like your job now is to sell to them and your e-com site needs to do it. And, you know, having great photos like pixels and, and things like that. And, and I will pivot here now to no, another thing we talked about is merchandising your site. And thank God bless, good pictures, okay. But if I'm not seeing the things that I like to see, it's mm -hmm. a complete waste of time. And there's a lot of technology out there for that. Thank goodness. Yeah, and that's, that is our, our main sponsor, LimeSpot. So, um, Love it. and I just realized funny enough, we didn't, I didn't switch this image over that just changed above my head. So I got that fixed, sorry about that. Um, okay. The, yeah, I, I think that um, because we, we might have come to a brand for some idea of what they do. We had easy peasy on earlier and it's like, okay, well, I definitely want, you know, this tray for my, for my child that won't fall off the, the table when they start like moving it around because they're very clumsy and it's like, okay, that's great. We've got the tray. What else do you have that's going to make my life easier? And so if we're not able to see the, this in real time, if we're not able to understand what else the brand has to offer, then yeah, we just buy the tray and we, we leave. So having that, it's almost like having the the personal shopper pull you around from aisle to aisle and talk to you about, you know, how's your day? What are you doing? Like, okay, here's, here's what we've got here. And I always think about um, the beauty industry and how, uh, how you're able to, you know, you, sometimes you can try on makeup or they have a professional makeup artist sitting in the middle of Macy's that'll do your makeup for you and then sell you some makeup afterwards. It's like, how do we bring that level of, of experience online so that we're able to, um, to make a real connection. And I, we did see with Octane, you know, that starting with asking a few basic questions that mm -hmm. helps segment them, they're kind of self-selecting, mm -hmm. can be a really great way to, to start what feels like a conversation. It's not a real conversation yet, but it might, it might trigger a real conversation or reach out to customer service or filling in a live chat bubble or commenting on a social post or something like that, just because there felt like there was some back and forth, uh, you know, before that. I think sometimes I would agree with you. I just want to stop there and say, I agree with you. And I think sometimes brands get lost in why they, or, or retailers are like, well, why are we here? Right? So with easy peasy, uh, it sounds to me like we're here to solve a pain point. Your stuff, we are the pain point solution for this child rearing of plates falling and, uh, Binkies flying off, or whatever it whatever it is, we'll you know we'll secure your kid to their chair if we have to. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, parental pain points. I mean, the list is is endless. The site could be endless, right? So, <laughs> there's that. Uh, now, yes. beauty beauty is actually different. It's fear. That they they need to take someone who is fearful that they don't know what to do with makeup absolutely petrified. I could never buy that because I don't know how to use it. And their job is to allay the fear and get that person comfortable into the other side. Yeah. How they do it, how each of these types of companies do it, they can use different forms of technology, et cetera. But as long as they keep that one kind of mantra in, in line, and it's so easy to get lost, um, you know, that is kind of, um, they then can filter through the noise on tech suppliers and ways to show the product, ways to merchandise the product, videos to create, stories to tell. It answers so many questions. I love it. All right, we're already running low on time here. Let's talk about uh, other new technologies or AI technologies. Uh, if you've got anything that you you just want to shout out, maybe I see one in our notes on the return management process. If you want to dive into it, I I did want to comment on that, but before before we got there, I, one of our other notes was that we're going to start seeing this thumbs up, some thumbs down again. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's let's go here. I'm What's show happening? The, the link just, to uh, Amazon yeah. Discovery, which I, you showed me um, the other day. This is 
this is really something. And I think LimeSpot might be building something like this. I need to uh, talk to, to Sharon and their, their team because I think it is becoming uh, quite common here. We'll share this here in chat, Amazon Discovery. And maybe if you're if you're in chat here right now, tell us what you think about um, up, thumbs upping and thumbs down in all these products here. But yeah, Christine, tell us about um, this type of personalization we're seeing. So Amazon is acknowledging that their that their search is not great, and they're really asking the client to help uh, help control it. So it's AI or help guide it. It's AI with human touch, and LimeSpot and others are 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 ways that retailers that aren't Amazon that could do it. Amazon is writing their own, but if you're going to work with a tech solution provider, they're they're out there, and so you're browsing and. You, you are able to, I mean, there are times when you know you don't like something, but you don't like it so much that you want the, the, the AI, you want the machine learning to know this is something I really don't like. I'm not just passing over it. I don't like this aesthetic. I don't ever want to see it ever again. For example, let's say I'm shopping for lamps and I don't like that aesthetic. If I put a thumbs down, it will wipe out that entire, um, genre per se. Um, it's sort of actually, if you think about it, it's what we, we used to have it in music. Which one? Spotify does not have it. And trust me, there are times when I'm like, okay, I can heart this Spotify, but I really want to thumbs down this one because <laughs> it's just not my vibe. Right. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of going forward by bringing a little bit of the past things that worked. Um, I think pure automation is, is, I think everyone is saying, okay, um, but there is a human touch. And back to Brian's point, which is we take out the rote and now the creators can work. You get lost in thinking removing a background and adding a shadow is creative. It's not. It is not. We, the AI and automation will take out that rote. And so you add the human element to, element to create. So that is like for like when you're shopping and they're presenting you images through their AI and you add the human element, which is you're a little off base. Let's, let's help you be better. Yeah. I th there's so much uh, here. I'm tinkering around with this and I'm like, oh, there are certain kind of like design aesthetics that I just will never buy. Like I'll never buy them. Let never. me go. Th so I'm thumbsing down some things and it's really interesting how it, how it moves this around. I think that, you know, it's it's the next iteration over behavioral uh, browsing experience where it's like, well, I see what they looked at. And so I can kind of make some inferences there, but maybe they did like other things. They're just not shopping for them now. So I need to keep that in mind, but there are probably things that they never want to see that I, there's no way to figure out that they never want to see it. So that I'm, you know, I, there's, there's no system to, uh, yeah, guarantee that. So this human touch plus artificial right. intelligence. High tech, high touch. This is yeah. kind of where we're coming back to. The pendulum is here and then here. Maybe we're here now and yeah. and you and I will keep covering wherever it goes. It'll be, the, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, Christine, if people want to get in touch with you, how, you're, you're working primarily with the tech provider side, you said, but we've got tech providers in the audience and there's also some retailers that might want to pick your brain. How can people Absolutely. get a hold of you? So my name is Christine Russo, and my company is RCCA, which stands for Retail Creative and Consulting Agency. And you can reach me at christine at rccagency.com. I'm going to put that in the chat here. Just one second. I, I typed it wrong. Let me find it. Take your time. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Should have had this ready. Sorry, everybody. All right, here we are in chat. Uh, oh, Eric saying Pandora's got the thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh, that was the one. Okay. Yeah. Who? Uh, where's Pandora at anymore? Everyone's on Spotify. Gone. <laughs> it's like MySpace. Spotify came along just like Facebook came along. <laughs> yeah. Um. By the way, you've got a Matrix background. Love the Matrix. Uh, Do you like how I did the AI vibes? <laughs> we, yeah, we, um, yeah, it, it perfectly aligns. Talk about robots really taking over. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, my background is usually a Matrix theme. I, uh, I just changed oh, is that the right? Theme. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, what do you know? I'm doing the same thing. Thanks, uh, yeah, it's just one of my favorite movies, but 
Yeah, it, everybody, if you want to get in touch with Christine, you've got the email address right here. Christine, thanks so much for your time today. It was really great chatting with you. My pleasure. Thank you so much.